Welcome one and all to another episode of the Rocker Dog Podcast, the show that talks to musicians about their dogs in a fun and sometimes revealing interview. I'm your host, Tim Dill. My expert advisor on dogs is Charlie the Golden Doodle. And today we are delighted to talk dogs with Luis Post of Veruca Salt. Luis released an excellent solo record last year called Sleepwalker and is still touring behind it with a date this week in Minneapolis and next month in LA, Chicago, St. Louis, and Nashville. And this is her generous, sweet, and welcoming rocker dog. We will be talking primarily about Prince Pilot Parks. Um, Interesting name. Any, Any inspiration from Prince Rogers Nelson? Strangely, my daughter was six when we got Prince, and we did not have a name for him. We had rehomed him from a family who didn't have the bandwidth or the patience, I suppose, for a seven-month-old golden retriever puppy. <laughs> so they were rehoming him, and um, I was really wanting to adopt a dog and rescue a dog. This was and this ended up being a sort of rescue light because he needed a new home. Yeah. And and when we got him, they had named him Dodo, which in Chinese I, I gather means blessing. Okay. And we didn't want to keep it as Dodo because in English it's not so nice. So he was without a name for a while until one day he sits he was sitting very regally as he does. And my daughter said, Mom. He, she said, he looks like a prince. She said, oh, mom, we should name him Prince. And he was Prince from that day forward. Pilot is his middle name. And also the three Ps, his last name is Park. So that's how his name came to be. And then it wasn't after Prince Roger Nelson, even though I was a gigantic fan. And the day we named our dog Prince, later that same day, Somebody just randomly said to me, did you know it's been a year since Prince died? And it was just uncanny. Wow. So there's the story. So for me, he's uh, he's named after Prince. and But my child had never heard of Prince, didn't know Prince's music, didn't know who Prince was. She was just going off of the regality. Nice. Now, does that mean you've had him eight years? Don't rub it in, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Oh my God, is he eight? I think I'm in denial. I think I think he's seven. For some reason, I have him. I'm, I have him as seven. I think he's seven. Um, the life of a golden retriever, seven, uh, starts to feel kind of old. And, and even though my husband says no, no, he's still very much like a puppy, and he's very perky, and he is. He's super playful. And but I can, you know, I see some gray hair, and I see him. You know, he's not like he once was, which was wild and unruly and unwieldy, <laughs> just like, you know, as he should be all over the place and eating our baseboards. And oh, you know. no, <laughs> I keep hearing that more and more. <laughs> um, but my friend told me that she had two goldens and she said it never stops. They continue to eat your baseboards their entire <laughs> life. And luckily that has not been the case for us. He's really stopped He's not a destroyer. Like our dog before Prince was named Rufus and he liked to get to the middle of the toy, you know, like right, right squeaker yep. and who will take out all the stuffing. And he was like that kind of doggy. And um, he was like a, a shepherd lab mix and he was beloved. And it was really, really hard for us when Rufus passed and we waited. Um, well, I, also when Rufus passed, I had, we had a one and a half year old. So we weren't eager to start taking care of another creature because it right. was full on, but I missed having a dog so much. And when, um, when my daughter was started asking for a dog, I started feeling like it was really time, but Prince doesn't really, he like he, with his stuffies, he just likes to cuddle with them and use them as pillows for his face, for his head. And he always, um, I call them his babies. And he always likes to romp around with his babies and sleep with them. And he always brings them to bed with him. And it's super sweet. It's like just adorable. That's great. Well, you're, you're getting into the context of Prince. And there's a quote I wanted to ask you about that I, ha- I think it has to do with it because you wrote on Instagram that, he is the goofiest boy and the baby that came into my life and fixed my everything. He makes me better. So 
specifically, was there just chaos in your life with a, a young daughter and, you know, or what was there anything specific going on in your life that, you know, the dog kind of came in and I won't say answered your prayers, but, you know, kind of soothed the, the road? Well, I remember when you asked me, I knew this was coming because I remember <laughs> when you asked me to do this interview, you honed in on that. And that had obviously piqued your interest about my love of dogs and my connection with my dog. And I remember writing that on Instagram and thinking, I'm just going to drop this like kind of subtle bomb and hope nobody notices. <laughs> <laughs> because well, my apologies. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't necessarily want to like wax on about what he fixed, but since we're here, I'll just tell you sort of basically what was going on. I, I've always had dogs and dogs are obviously such generous, loving companions, family members, friends. And I don't know life without dog. I grew up with dogs. I've always had dogs since I was born. And um, we always got our dogs at the shelter or if someone was giving away puppies. We would just go find a puppy or um, some cases we adopt a stray or something like that. But mm -hmm. I then had cats for quite a long time. And um, when my husband, now my husband, my then boyfriend moved from Minneapolis uh, to LA and moved in with me, he brought a mattress. Let's see. He brought a mattress, a dresser and a dog. And I remember thinking that, that the dog was going to be a deal breaker because I had cats and right. But as soon as I saw Rufus bounding, and I had met him before, and I was nervous about his how my cats would interact with him. But as soon as I saw him bounding up the street to me, I knew that he was my baby and, and everything was going to be okay and, and I wouldn't let him go. And so after Rufus passed away, he was that he was four when, when he came into my life and 15 when he died. And then it was six years till, till we got Prince. My cats had both passed away at that point and... Um, we had a, we had a house with no animals. It was so weird. Like to me, that's just that's not the norm. Yeah. And our daughter was asking for a dog, and I think like all kids do, they see pictures of golden retrievers on like you know cereal boxes and think that's the dog they need to have. And I had never had a golden before. And as I said, I really wanted to adopt. And, and um, I was I was desperate to get a dog and and I was really adamant. So it, it took a while to work on my husband with it because he was Rufus was his dog. He followed him home one night in Chicago after like being at the bar. It's like my husband was riding on a skateboard home and the dog just followed him home. He was a stray and he moved in. He just moved in. And that was that. He was really like soulmates with the dog. Although mm -hmm. I, in the end, I spent far more time with him. You know, people say like with couples who intend to have children, having a dog or, or cat is like a baby before having a baby. And he was very much ours. And so when my daughter was six and she was asking for a dog, I had to work on my husband a while. And I was like experiencing anxiety like I had never before. And I didn't know what it was. My child was six and in school. And I really, I felt like I was kind of detaching. Like there was, I needed something to tether me to reality, to hold me down. It's like, I knew that desperately, I knew that I needed a dog. I think also I needed I needed the love of an animal and to be able to take care of said animal and specifically a dog and to, um, I think possibly, even though I've never thought of it in this way, I think I felt that an that a dog would tie our family together in a way that we needed at the time. And he has done that. Prince totally has done that. My friend described dogs to me once as angels in fursuits. Yeah. And he's most definitely an angel in a fursuit. He's pure love and pure joy. And he's also, um, he's, I'm looking at him right now. He's sleeping like an angel. <laughs> he like, he does the double cross of the paws. Yeah, that's you know? so cute. So darling. And it's very nice of him because it's actually past his second walk of the daytime. It's nice that he's, he's sleeping, giving me this opportunity <laughs> to talk to you. Um, because when it, when he wants something, he's relentless. Like he puts his head in my lap. He's he, if I'm on my phone and he doesn't want me on my phone, he just knocks my hand off my <laughs> phone. He's just not having it. And he's very much by the, by he's very much goes by the schedule. So if it's time to mm -hmm. go for a walk, if it's time to be fed, 
even if it's a little before time to be fed, he lets me know and knows no uncertain terms. So he's not passive. Um, he has, he doesn't nap more than he used to, thank God, because when I first got him, he was so full of energy as anyone with a puppy knows. I would take him to the dog park for an hour in the morning and an hour at night. And then he got another like hour walk. There was just no calming him down. And it was way more than I imagined it would be. But he just, he was so different than Rufus. He is so different than Rufus. And my husband has not connected with him in the way that I have, uh, which is honestly hard for me because I came home with this dog. I came home with him. Like Mm -hmm. I found him, I came home with him and my daughter and I chose him. And I, I was hoping that my husband would have a soul connection with him, but he, he doesn't really right. not, not in the way that we both had with Rufus. And um, my connection with him is certainly different than it was with, with Rufus, but he's my baby. Like I take care of him. He's I'm his, I'm his human. I'm his mama. And, <laughs> you know, we were having a second child was not in the cards for us, but having a dog was. And right. he's very much the baby of the family. And it's lovely. Like he just brings so much joy to us. And my husband and he definitely have a good relationship and an understanding. And my husband does all the does all the brushing and he plays fetch with him all the time. And they have they have a good bromance. But Prince, um, if I leave town or if I'm not around for even a full day or something, Prince looks pretty moby. He'd much rather have mom around. Yeah. <laughs> I know how that is. I know how that is with my dog. <laughs> well, in, do, in doing the research, I'm surprised of Rufus's story because I think you have one post on your Instagram and you go on to say, we were two souls beating as one. I miss him every day. So hearing that and hearing that it was your husband's dog and your husband hasn't really had the soulful connection with Prince, is he holding back? Is he being guarded with, with Prince? Yeah, I don't I think he doesn't ever want to feel that pain again. That was he was devastated. And so he is being guarded. But I think there's also something that's just true about one's connection with certain animals. Also, I think I don't even like to say this out loud, but having human children in our both of our cases changed our relationships and our perceptions, not perceptions, but I think our relationships to dogs and how we felt about them for some time. Um, I would never, ever give away a pet of mine, but I had seen people who had found new homes for their dogs, friends of mine, when they Mm. had a baby. And I didn't understand that at all. And I'm not talking about a pit bull, whether or not, whatever you're feeling about that is. Um, uh, I'm talking about a a min pin and just like a mini lab, you know? Um, they just didn't have the bandwidth to take care of a dog anymore. Our dog was ailing when Charlie was little. Uh, Rufus was ailing. So it was like taking care of a senior dog who had a lot of issues, like during when I, when we had a baby. So that was tough. But like, even though I was the one that, well, Tony just couldn't do it. I was the one who had my body wrapped around him on the floor when he passed. And mm-hmm. Tony was standing and couldn't do it. He just couldn't do it. Yeah, um, I had to do it because somebody had to do it and I had to be with him. So I, I was like, I spent a lot of time at home at that time. Rufus and I like, like lived on the couch. I took him on big hikes in Griffith Park every day. We were so close. We were homies. And yeah, I mean, I was as close to him as I am to Prince, except there was, um, yeah, there was some, it was a different connection. It's hard to explain, yeah. but I also had a different connection with him. And with Prince, he was just a big goofball. You know, when we got him, he's just a giant goofball. And, you know, when you try, I try to put my head on, you know, connect our eyes and put our heads together. That's what I've always done with my dogs and, and hold that moment, you know, and he's just not that dog. He just, (laughs) he'll move his head. He'll present his rear, rear end and want you to scratch in there. I mean, he lets me pet him plenty and I sing lullabies to him every night and I tuck him in and he loves that. And he just like goes, he's like, sort of like, does these sort of deep, like growls, like, you know, when I'm giving, singing to him, he has his own song that was just, I wrote just for him in my head and it's stuck. And so anyway, all the dogs have their own songs. Right. Um, but he is, uh, he's very different. They're all different, right? He's very different from Rufus. And I, I, I also feel like 
every day I wake up and I'm so grateful I get another day with him because I'm, I've seen dogs go, you know, and I can't bear like the idea that golden retrievers don't live as long as they once did. Well, oftentimes I ask if a dog has made it into your art. I, I have an instance I want to bring up, but I think just on the subject of, you know, you were getting into a little bit and, you know, one of the podcast I listened to that you were on recently was the uh, the Hustle podcast with John Lamoureux. And you were talking about the song, All These Years, and how um, some of your life was shaped by the fear of being left or people leaving, loved ones leaving. And I was just curious if that, you were kind of getting into that just now. Does that relate to the dog as well? Like just, you know, different aspects of your life, you know, not being there forever and having to adapt, you know, to a new way without them? Yeah, I'm not I'm super not okay with impermanence and thank god we most of us outlive our pets so we can be there with them but knowing that there there's a finite amount of time with him makes me really just want to appreciate every every moment I have with him um and he's a lot like he he's demanding of my time he really wants my attention a lot of the time sometimes I sit down I'm finally able to sit down and do some work and the scratch at the door like it's like just clockwork you know and i i have to close the door i can't get any privacy so i let him in and then he may want something else and he's you know he's really needy and i i know that's what i signed up for but um it can be it can feel like a lot and yet and i don't always feel like walking him i don't it's not always easy and we don't have a big a yard where he just like does his business so we we take right. him out and we we walk him a lot. We walk him every day, three times a day, because dogs need to get move forward and be out in nature and communicate with their with their surroundings that way. And it's great for us too. And and you know, my husband was always saying that he wanted to see more of our neighborhood, but he was always working at his job kind of far away. And surprise, surprise, he got to start walking the dog in our neighborhood. <laughs> and and then of course resisted it a bit because it's one doesn't always feel like doing that but it's yeah. always a gift I mean, he's just a gift you know it's mm -hmm. a gift to get out in nature it's a gift to get out in the in the neighborhood and just to be in the air just to see the views and look at the plants and um, be able to walk side by side and and get steps in or whatever just be exer just exercise and be out there so He's just a blessing in every way. And I think I just went off track. But, oh, you asked about art. And has he made it into a song? I'll, I'll, let me just give you one example. The Way We Live, which obviously has bigger themes of relationships. And... Yeah, he did make it into that song. <laughs> but but the thing is, you're, and I got to compliment you on your, you know, Sleepwalker is such a great, great album. Thank you. And your your narratives are so descriptive in your music. You know, so there's... I know sometimes you, obviously you take liberties and obviously you're you're pulling from other places but i just just the simple opening line of i don't want to leave the dog inside while you watch the grass and we pass the time and i was just curious was that a specific can you point to a specific incident yeah that, I was that that's, this happens often or happens once or there was a period of time where we had had a lot of rains and so our grass was really muddy so my husband replanted the grass and asked me if I would please leave the dog inside while the grass grew. <laughs> I was like, no, no. It was so irritating <laughs> because the dog needed to come outside. It's his happy place. He loves the front yard. And, and I just thought like, this is the most irritating thing. And it was during COVID when everything was locked down. And I thought, I no. You know, this is one of those things where like we are just butting heads and, and you know, you have one idea of how things should be and I have a completely different and I gather marriage is somewhat of a compromise. I keep having to relearn that. Yeah. But another thing I'm totally not in acceptance about is the <laughs> compromise. <laughs> um, because if it were up to me, we would have like, we would have three dogs and I would yeah. be fostering dogs and my husband is just, I mean, he's going to hate me for this podcast because if he ever listens to it, he's going to say, you made me out to be sound like such a villain. He really, 
does care for Prince. Like he really does. And he, if I have to go on tour, he holds the fort down. Like he's, he's lovely with him, Yeah. but he's more particular. Like he doesn't want a dog in the kitchen. He doesn't want a dog on the bed. Rufus used to sleep with us all the time, by the way. Doesn't like want dogs on the couch. I'm like, why dogs live on couches? What yeah. was the deal? So again, there's that pesky compromise thing, but um, yeah, he didn't want him to be on the grass while it grew. And I thought, well, where else is he going to be? We're going to keep the dog in the house. So it yeah. was actually a real point of contention and it spurred that song. Okay. I'm glad I asked. It was uh, uh, interesting to hear that story. And I will give your husband credit for that compromise creates balance because I, I volunteer at our animal shelter and all the people I volunteer with, we would all have 50 dogs apiece. But everyone who volunteers, whether they're young, old, male or female, it's always their partner who's <laughs> like, I, we can't we can't rescue them all. You know, we can't yeah. bring them all in. And it's always like, so I, I, I give them credit for being the balance of, uh, you know, in the relationship. Well, that's a nice perspective. I appreciate it, actually, because he does, he often does bring rhyme and reason to my otherwise impulsiveness and, and wanting to rescue every creature I could possibly rescue. <laughs> and the truth is that I do count on him to walk the dog a lot and take care of the dog if I if I have to leave town and it would be putting it all into his lap. And if if it can't be me all the time, then I'm asking for partnership and, mm. and we'd be bringing another animal into our family. So um, I'm not saying I'm giving up, but um, I am saying that that he's uh, he's the bad guy. That's let's just say it, put it out there. <laughs> um, one thing I love about golden retrievers is just how their disposition. And me as an introvert, when I'm in a certain situation where I need to be social and I don't feel like being social, I wish I had the sense of mind to think just be a golden retriever, you know, just walk up to people and extend your hand and have a big smile on your face. And that begs the question to you, is there anything that you admire about Prince, you know, personality wise, or, you know, just the way he goes about life? Yes. I mean, he doesn't sweat the small stuff. Yeah. And it's all small stuff. By yeah. The way. <laughs> and he's just pure joy and pure love he loves everyone he can't wait to meet you he's a jumper i never really dissuaded him of that and i don't mind if he jumps on me again my husband just feels differently but he would like to hug if you'll let him you mm -hmm. know he's um he's just a lover he's just a big sweetie <laughs> and he really there is just he and also he knows when he's no problem taking naps you know he's like yeah. okay i'm done now now I'm just going to live here for a while and I'm going to get cozy. And then, um, you know, he values the, he values the important things in life, good company, food, treats, <laughs> and affection and cuddling and nature. He's a really good teacher. And he's, as I said before, like he's very grounding for me. Mm -hmm. First thing I do in the morning is I lean over and just pet him and connect with him and kind of wake him up. And then um, he sleeps on a dog bed next to me. So I just, I, I usually just like get on his level and cuddle or curl around him because I like to smell him in the morning. <laughs> Yeah, he's just he's just a bundle of joy and unconditional love. And he's, you know, he's wonderful company. Mm -hmm. And um, he's a kind soul. He makes everyone feel welcome. Yeah. And he brings um, he brings a lot of joy uh, to to the house. Also, we can't leave any food out. He will literally get up on the kitchen counter and put his nose in a colander full of spaghetti that's in the sink. <laughs> I walked in one day and he was he was on his hind legs eating spaghetti out of a colander and he looked like a bear from behind. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was going to say, let's wrap things up with the zoomies, which are the fast and frivolous last five questions. And the first question is, do you kiss Prince on the mouth or in and around the mouth? Yes. Okay. That's the correct answer. <laughs> you you mentioned this earlier, so this could be an in-depth answer, but if your dog had a theme song, what would it be? And you said you give him some original tunes. Oh, my my lullaby that I wrote for him? That would yeah. not be a theme song. Honestly, can I tell you the truth? Yeah. The first 
the first song that just came to mind was the theme to Sanford and Son. Did you know that? You know that? I think so. <laughs> dun, 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 dun. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Totally, dun, totally, dun, totally. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> yes. 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 That's just what popped in your mind just now? That's what popped into my mind. That's very funny. That's very funny. <laughs> Oh, uh, that's it. Yeah. <laughs> that works. That works. You'll you'll never oh, look at him the same way again. Yeah, I probably not. I do love dog kisses. I go straight for the dog mouth and I let dogs kiss. He does he's not really a, a, like a licker. Mm -hmm. Um and it really it's you know annoys me because I like dog kisses and he's just not into it. <laughs> but so if I have if I'm with someone else's dog and they're like licking my mouth and you know they the owner will say like oh I'm so sorry I'm like I don't care I love it. <laughs> <laughs> it's like ma'am can I help you with something? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, okay. Question three, what would Prince endorse? Like I can imagine throughout your career, you endorse guitar pedals and I, I hope you endorse Gibson SGs. I don't know if that came to fruition, but you have your strings and this and that. What would Prince endorse? He would endorse dog treats. He would endorse greenies. He would endorse any uh, uh, stuffed animals. <laughs> All right. <laughs> uh, question four is, do you use a dog voice to speak to him? The second part of that question is, do you give him a voice? Like if he were to speak, do you have a voice that would fit him? Mm, I don't have one of those. Okay, that's all right. And then last but not least, I always ask if there's a dog service or an organization that you want to give a shout out to, and that could be anything, groomer, a walker, anything. Yes, I do. It's called Pups Without Borders. They are okay. in Van Nuys, Van Nuys, California, and they rescue litters of puppies that have been dumped. They rescue pregnant mamas from the shelters and give her a safe place to have her puppies. And they take care of the puppies and find them homes. Um, awesome. They rescue puppy, litters of puppies from Tijuana, abandoned puppies, uh, litter, like whole litters. Yeah. And they give the litters a name and then they will... They work really hard to get people to foster and, and to adopt. Um, there are so many, but that's the one that I have become more connected to, that particular animal rescue organization, Pups Without Borders. Pups Without Borders. Yeah. Awesome. They sound yeah. great. They sound great. They're always in need. And, and they, they, yeah, they have a wish list, um, an Amazon wish list on their website. They're on Instagram and um they're always looking for fosters and always looking for adopters. Great. We'll put their info in the notes to the show and hopefully uh, a lot of people will see it and visit them and, and donate. Yeah, definitely. Thank you so much for doing that. Yeah. Oh, my pleasure. My pleasure. Well, Luis, thank you for coming on a show and talking dogs. I was excited to talk to you and uh, you didn't disappoint. And if I could make this show two hours long, I would, but... Uh... <laughs> I'll I'll uh, I'll let you go. I and, and I was I was pleasantly surprised to hear you were in the studio. So is there anything we can talk about in closing? Is there new music on the way? Yes, yes. I recording another album right now. It began as an EP of songs that didn't make it on a Sleepwalker, and it seems that it's turning into an LP before my very eyes because I have too many songs and they just keep coming. They don't stop. It's not like the valve is turned off. So um, we're at six songs now. Really, should I just finish it and make an album and just release yeah. it? Well, I think so. So there'll be probably, um, well, not probably, definitely a new album coming out in 2024. Great. Great to hear it. Well, thank you again. Have a terrific rest of your evening and uh, pleasure yeah. talking to you. You too. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you.